Um, that's basically it. Um, does anyone have any questions or want to shout out ideas? You said you started off with about 50 pound backpack. Where are you at now? Uh, good question. Yeah. Well, um, in the picture, I saw a flyer around here. I guess it was a picture of the flyer. Um, in, in that picture, I'm on Mount Whitney. And actually, I used this very uh, filter system the entire trip. Um, so I'm on Whitney. My, okay, my entire pack weight with food and water um, was 22 pounds. And that was including the three pound air canister, which they required to carry. So it would have been you know, just under 20 pounds if I didn't have to carry a pair of hands. My base weight, base weight is, you guys know what base weight is, it's, you know, from your water to your gear, right? Base weight's usually around 14, yeah. something like that. Heavier, heavier in winter, of course, like three seasons. Yeah. What kind of pack are you carrying? Uh, I've got uh, a lot of different packs. Um, <laughs> uh, right now, my favorite, um, Ferret Packs is made by the Cottage Gear industry, uh, Cottage, yeah, Cottage Gear uh, company called uh, Mount Laurel Designs. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of them. Um, it's made of Dyneema X uh, fabric. That's that fabric that's got the, the kind of grid look to it. It's really durable, but it's very lightweight fabric. Um, I've also got a Gossamer Gear, Mariposa Plus. Gossamer Gear is another kind of big cottage industry. In Pearl Break? Uh, frame, well, the first one I mentioned, the Mount Laurel Designs actually just has frames. There's no frame. The other one, it does kind of have a frame, but it's not like the big, thick aluminum stays that you see on a Gregory pack or something. It's a very thin tubular frame that goes around the inside. So it's kind of a little bit of a hybrid. But mostly I carry frameless packs. I carry packs by Go Light a lot. Um, it's basically just a big sack. They just throw everything in there. There's not much organization or uh, you know, anything like that. I do have some packs that have hip belt pockets, which are really nice, because I can put my snacks, my camera, and chopstick, and stuff like that, and it's all pockets, and I never really have to go to the path on the trail. So, yeah. I'm making answers to this. When you're using your alcohol on the pill, do you have a bonus for the alcohol in the lightweight Oh, stuff? yes, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. I brought, let's see, hold on a bit. This didn't work, no. carry your denatured alcohol in? And uh, the answer is any plastic bottle. Some people carry just a, one of those smaller Aquafina water bottles. Um, if you need more fuel, those work great. They're a little bit hard to pour um, because you know, you've got that big spout, you've got a smaller stove, it's a little bit slightly dangerous. Um, but you know, any, any kind of squeeze bottle, you can buy those bottles at REI, you know, in all different sizes that have little flip top squeeze. I actually carry a contact lens solution bottle from Boston. This one is white and it's got the blue top on it. And I like that one. I don't wear contacts, but I, I have people who really save them for me. Um, yeah, I have, I have people who have cats saving their cans for me too. I, I get a big bag of them. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, but, but, the, but the, nice thing, the nice thing about denatured alcohol, it's, it's uh, not as noxious as white gas or butane. So, you know, if, you, if you've ever poured white gas on your hand, you, you know <laughs> uh, what happens. And, um, but do you know you can pour it right all, you know, all over yourself if you wanted it not. You are you just stab it. But, I mean, it won't, it won't eat your skin away. Um, you know, it's just, it's just not as potent of a chemical. So, any, any plastic bottle will do. Quick question. This is the wood stove. Yep. I assume it sets up and you put your pot here. Yep, that's right. Is this open to put more wood in? Is that what you're... Yeah, exactly. You, you want to bring that up here and I'll just I'll show you that one way. Does the alcohol burn pretty clean? Do you need alcohol burn? burns very, very, very clean. No soot, no orange flame. Uh, it's usually just a blue flame. It, it really, again, if you go to my uh, website and look at some of my videos, you'll see it looks just like a gas stove that you would have at home. It's a bright blue flame. Nice and clean, uh, no oral fumes or odors or anything like that. Um, now, there, you can also use heat, which is a gas take additive. Um, it's H E E T. You can get that at any automotive shop. Uh, that works really well too. But you only want to get the one in the yellow bottle, not the red bottle. That's bad. You will have a major problem if you use it. Yeah. 
Anyway, anyway, yeah, the, the question was, how does this basically work? And uh, put your pot on top. Well, first, you would fill it with wood and get it going. Put your pot on top, and then if you see, there's a little uh, opening here. If you need to feed uh, the stove with more wood, you can just pass it through this little opening here. And the nice thing about wood stoves is, you know, unlike the alcohol, you know, this is going to go out after six minutes or, you know, something like that. And if you, if you want to keep cooking, you have to take the pot off, take the wood screen, refill it, and bring it back. The nice thing about wood stoves is you can pretty much feed them for, not indefinitely, but a very, very long time. So if you needed to cook a long time, uh, that's a good option. But, you know, again, there's always, there's always the disadvantage. You're going to get tons of soot on the bottom of your pot. And it's a little bit messy, so you want to carry a stuff sack. You know, just to kind of keep the, the rest of your contents in your pack clean. So that's one, one disadvantage of wood stoves. The other one, of course, is if it's raining, you know, and it might be hard to find wet, uh, dry wood. So it's a problem too. You know how to keep your woods or your pots easy to clean up? There, there is. There are, there are some uh, ways people do it. One is you can actually just kind of literally cover it with aluminum foil. Before you do it, and when you're done, just take out the foil and you've got your clean pot. Um, some people say that rubbing soap on the bottom of here works. Um, I haven't really tried that myself. It does, it does work, right? Yeah. And what kind of soap? Just bar soap? Bar soap. Oh, you don't have dishwashing soap? And that works as well. Yeah. The other thing is to just give it up, get the stove black. You know, and, and literally the uh, stove black paint or things like that for your things and turn the pot black. Yeah. It's a better heat transfer. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, actually, there's, there's a guy on, um, his, his name is uh, Timmy, his nickname, his real name is John Austin, but he runs a site called mini, miniballdesigns.com. And uh, this guy's. This guy is kind of like the, the ultimate mad scientist or DIY. He, 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 he's created uh, all kinds of stoves. He sells stoves on his, uh, his website. But you know, he's, a, he's a big fan of, of the Heineken pots. And uh, you know, one of the things he, he does is he paints the bottom here black, and then uh, sometimes the top red just to, he, I think he uses real paint, high heat resistant real paint. Um, so yeah, that's another thing you can do. And you know, after a while, you get, you'll get a, a build up here at the bottom. So if you don't care anything, you know, just kind of, kind of live with it. Anything else? Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Uh,